Daniel a big hand for what he's done. And all of you. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, if uh, the man up in the sound room there, to put the light on Mitchell Farrell again. Mitch, you're the man now. You're the man. So one of the things in life is you get opportunity. And I had great opportunity. I was born in Los Angeles. My parents were born in Los Angeles. Both my parents went to college in the 30s. My mom, Mount St. Mary's, my dad, Loyola. And I uh, came from a big family. And so public parks were real important to us because that's where you played. And I also starred in, uh, at, the, at the Cultural Arts Center, which burned down on Riverside Drive in Griffith Park, in Hansel and Gretel. I was Hansel. <laughs> But it burned out many, many years ago, but it got you to the stage, it got activity. Just think how each of us in this room, somebody along the way gave us a hand or an encouragement that got us to today, which the arts is so important. I'm a great believer, and Mitchell Farrell is a great leader in this because he's taken the baton. The Olympic Games in 1984 was the first time that we had an art festival. And after the Olympic Games, our city really diversified. Prior to that, it was a black, white, brown, yellow town in all different squares never mixed together. Now, over these last 30 years, the diversity of our city, which adds to the cultural strength of our city and the arts of our community, has really grown. And it's all about neighborhoods and neighborhoods. And Santa Monica Boulevard, of all boulevards, is one of the toughest boulevards because it is a truck route. When Daniel and I walked that street, there was a big Peterbilt every minute, every minute coming down, shifting Johnny Cash would have liked it. All those gear shifted <laughs> drive, and uh, it, it is, but it connects to the connects to the rest of the West Side. Highway Two, which was the old number four Santa Monica Boulevard, was originally a state route that was going to be a freeway, and then the freeway was planned to be south of Paramount Pictures. That would take out the old Raleigh Studios, which I forget the name of before, and the Hancock Park people fought it, the Country Club people fought it, and Beverly Hills fought it. No freeway, but still the traffic keeps coming. And so you have a big challenge with that because it is a main artery for trucks. And every cement truck has to go down that street as it goes to build the west end of town or the central part of the west side. But that all being said, you're here, which is so important. And to try to put you all together gives you great strength. And to give you identity, when I was uh, in the Tamil Channel restaurant uh, after meeting the Atwater Village Neighborhood Association, Christine Hersey, who some of you may know, uh, said, Tom, we want to add Village to Atwater. And the only town that really had Village behind it in a strong way was Westwood Village. And so David Roberti, the senator, was there, and we asked him, he was in the, at the meeting, and he said, this is like 30 years, 35 years ago, well, we'll put Village. So then you have Atwater Village, you have Largemont Village. You have all these villages that have popped up. And people like a village. I love Hillary, and I know she said it takes a village, but I think all of us love villages. And you think of it to me, now I'm just going to say too, with no disrespect to any other part of the city, ironically, Largemont Village, which is between Melrose and Third, and not a through street, but a big street, uh, is, a, is to me the ideal village street that you could have. As I look to the future, Mitch, one thing that I hope you could run with one day is creating the Yucca Village up in Hollywood, which is the small street to the north, or the Selma Village, which is south, uh, in the center between Hollywood and Sunset, and also the Cherokee Village, because if you went down Cherokee from Hollywood Boulevard, what would you fall into? You have a choice. You go to the Confessionals, it's uh, Blessed Sacrament, or you can go to Crossroads of the World. And I know each and every one of you would rather go to Crossroads of the World, because you don't need to confess anything. But uh, that's, what, that's right there right now. But we have to find a way, and the mayor of our city, who learned a lot as a council member, and I'm sure some of that was Mr. O'Farrell's contribution as his chief field man, is these green streets. You need to have some big streets to carry big traffic, there's no question. But you also gotta take small streets and create these village atmospheres that people wanna be in. So, and uh, as just as Dan Holden got introduced, I got introduced to Camilla Blanche, who's my great uh, deputy of arts and culture and driving force. Camilla, where's Camilla? Stand up, Camilla, wave for everybody. So, she also heads up the Sister City program that I chair that uh, is a long story, but it's a good story, but I won't tell it to you today. But the Sister City program is another way to expand in the arts. You know, to get the arts, the uh, community in tune, we just had a whole exhibit in France, in Bordeaux, France, and it was on East Side uh, uh, Art, and uh, Cheech Marin, who you know from Cheech and Chong, is a very big art guy, and it was tremendous in the 
French really dug to see this type of art that really wasn't exposed to them. Art that comes from our communities are the best. So uh, Camilla, thank you. Give her another hand for all your hard work. Daniel, you, uh, as Mitchell Farrell's working hard on that fee, we want to release the money that's there. There's no sense of having money sitting in City Hall. You've got to put money in communities. I got an argument with one of my colleagues. It wasn't Mitchell Farrell because he's a good guy. And uh, he wanted to crunch the numbers. It was about two positions. It was a small thing. And, I, and he came from the state as a state representative. I said to myself, gosh, you've got to just get the money to the people. And it's like watering a field. It will grow. And when it grows, it will feed. And when it feeds, people get strong. So it's real simple. So what we're going to do with this, some of that money to help supplant some of the things that you need. And I think the, uh, the thinking that Mitchell Farrell is providing as the chairman of Arts and Parks is real good to look at that uh, in a way that we can create these. And I remember, I wish I remember Ted's uh, last name, but it, and it's a, the theater. And it began with a C. It was over on El Central. I was working with John Ferraro. And he had a problem. Ted Schmidt, right? Ted Schmidt was the Ted Schmidt. Cast theater. Cast theater. One of the first uh, tragic victims of the AIDS crisis. And this is a long time ago. And trying to help him with the fire department and all the little things, the CD, just to get going. And that's so important because those are beacons of light. Somebody makes that stage, you know, just like I was a football player and I last game I ever played in was in 1973 against UCLA Frosh. That's how long ago it was. I could still hear my head ringing. But I wanted to be a football player. Just like an actor wants to be on a stage, you know, and, and, and an actress. And that's the opportunity these stages give. And, and just the feeling of communicating with people is so important for that. So that's what we pledge to do and help. And Camilla's going to work with you, Daniel, to make sure we give as much money as we can. And whatever festival we do, it would be difficult to close Santa Monica Boulevard. But somehow, some way, we should figure something on the arteries on the side to be able to open them up. And the dynamic change that was happening in South Hollywood here, because years ago, anybody remember Glen Glen Sound over here? Yeah, Glen Glen Sound. Everybody was making a movie had to go to Glen Glen Sound on Hudson. You know, wherever they had to go. Everything they had to go to Kodak to be processed. They'd be shooting in Montana, but they'd fly the plane into Burbank and they'd race over to Kodak and process it. Now all of it's done on location. That's why they're all leaving town, because they could do it all because of technology. But all this is still has to remain some connection to entertainment and arts, and also trying to draft off. As we get a little more uh, enticing as a community here, you'll see uh, Starline tours. You know, I see them come by uh, the police station. It's the TMZ tours. And the little guy who talks like Harvey Levin or whatever the guy is there, he's talking. And this is the Hollywood Hotel, the Gray Bar Hotel, and he talks all about Hollywood. Well, we got to get him down here to start talking to people. The, the tourist dollar is very important, you know, in such a way to do. So I pledge my support, and I, uh, uh, I want to live a long time, but I'm not going to leave Los Angeles in some way. I want to help arts, athletics, and uh, and the life of people in the city to enjoy. So thank you for being here today on Saturday. There's more to do. And uh, that's the future right there. What's your daughter's name? Sophie. Sophie. Let's hear it for Sophie.